Hey everybody, I'm Mary. Thanks for joining me today on this Facebook Live here at the Country Chic Paint page. Um, today I'm going to do a really fun craft project that um, you guys have probably tried before, but it's just a little ombre terracotta pot project. So I've done a couple of examples, and just for watching this video, you also, um, for commenting as well on the video, you are um, entered into our draw at the end of the video, and you could be a lucky winner of some giveaway prizes. Uh, these are the things that I've been using for the project, our amazing painting sponges. So we're going to be giving away two of those, if you're a lucky winner, four samples of paint to complete a project or two, and two of our um, color cards. This is our last one collection that we just released and our main 35. So you can uh, view the colors hand painted, so it's really handy to tell just what exactly the colors look like. And I think our question for today for the comment in order to get this prize is just what would you paint um, ombre and what colors would you use? So be sure to comment to win and uh, we'll announce the winner at the end of the video. So I'm just going to get started here. If you guys are curious what colors we used on these, this is Ulala La from the Lustrum Collection, Shears, a dark purple, this is whoop de doo and Fancy Frock. I absolutely love the names that we have <laughs> for the new collection. Uh, so just getting started here, I've got my handy sponges, they've already been used. This has been rinsed several times, used many times. I love them very much. <laughs> Can't wait to show you guys how cool they are. Just a simple terracotta pot. I did seal the inside with top coat just so that there's no contaminants that leach through uh, once the dirt is in and you're watering it. You don't want your design to be ruined. So just be sure you seal the inside with clear coat or top coat. Uh, so just gonna get started here. I'm gonna do a neutral um, ombre because somebody in one of our videos mentioned that. I thought it was a really good idea. So I'm going to be going with the color Vanilla Frosting, which is a nice off-white, um, not a piece of cake, canapé, <laughs> which is a nice little chocolate brown a little, a little lighter than chocolate. Um, and then Soiree, which is like a, a light mushroom tone. So we're going to be working with that. I have a little spray bottle because it does help just to blend if you have some spray. This is a really fine mist. So if you can find something like that, that's really good. Not an actual sprinkler style, because that's what creates drips, unless that's the look you're going for. Um, you, while I do recommend these sponges, because it's what I'm using today, you can um, pick up the craft store variety. Probably something a little bigger than this will make it easier to use. So I'm just gonna jump right into it. I'm gonna start with vanilla frosting. We're gonna go, um, actually no, we're gonna start with the bottom. Nikki says she has a small end table and would love to do this for an accent piece, but loves the planter idea too. Absolutely. Yeah, I don't think I would ombre everything in my house, but hmm. at least a good focus piece or something. And Deb wants to do a set of shelves in C colors. Nice. Oh, that, oh, that would be really nice. Absolutely. So I'm just going to stipple this on. All I did, it's very malleable. You hold this end. You can paint with this side, but it's perfectly designed for a palm. So I'm just going to... Stipple it on, it's kind of like that 90s sponge art that everyone was <laughs> really into. Oh, Linda says she's new to watching and new to this paint. Well, I'm glad you found us, Linda. Hey, Linda, <laughs> follow along. Hopefully, maybe we inspire you for some projects. So even just on its own, look at how easy this is going to be. It's just a soft edge. It does create a little bit of a texture. Our paint is self-leveling to some degree, but um, even dry, there is a slight, you can tell that it was sponged on, but I kind of like that texture. It's almost like it was sprayed on with a paint sprayer, so sort of like that. And I don't want a lot of canopy because I want more of a lighter look with this one, but you want to just kind of carve out your sections. So I know that it's going to be dark brown on the bottom. Soiree in the middle and vanilla frosting on top. So I'm just gonna get those out now. And I've been, for this one, I was using Ulala on this end and Cheers on this end. So you can kind of, if you're careful with how you're stippling and not contaminating the paint layers, you can use the same sponge and it's really quick to catch it. So you do wanna do everything while it's sort of wet. But I've just got tons of extra sponges here that I'm gonna use. Gonna make some space. Ooh, Amber says she has an old antique small dresser and would love a bright green. Nice. Um, we've got Rustic Charm on there, and then not pictured is um, W-A-L-K. It's from our Furry Friends collection. It's a zesty lime green. Maybe something like that would be would be cool. Actually, it kind of looks a little like that mix there that I made by accident. <laughs> Ruby says um, full bloom and vanilla frosting. She has a... Uh, she has to paint a flower pot now, and she loves these. Things are super cute. <laughs> so thanks, Ruby. Mm. Probably should have started with Soiree, the middle color, but 
I have the wrong one. That's okay. <laughs> as long as I don't touch this and let it dry for a bit. And the best part is sponges will make thinner coats so it dries faster. So you might find that you do an extra coat as opposed to the one to two. Um, but that's totally all right. It's just whatever coverage you need. Thinner, more even coats dry faster and uh, look better generally in the end. So just stippling it on. This does kind of remind me a little bit of those 90s sponged mm -hmm. walls. Did anybody have those in their house? Comment if you did. I did. <laughs> My grandma had, and I think maybe still has, um, like a dark purple wall with light lilac sponge dots. But it's very obvious. It's just <laughs> one good dot and she moved on. So that's been up for 20 years. <laughs> this is the, the modernized version of yes, that. <laughs> the cool version. This is also just a great project to try maybe with the kids. It's really simple. Um, it's an, an easy technique. You can do this with brushes. Um, all just depends kind of on your own preference and sort of what you're painting. Got to add a little bit more vanilla frosting to my tray here. Amber says, do you recommend using this paint on a bathroom vanity? Uh, many have. I really would recommend sealing it with Tough Coat just to make sure that it lasts and it's got good um, defense, like general wear and tear. Um, Definitely use the top, like a tough coat over top of the vanity paint. Um, I've seen some people use wax, but I guess if you have um, makeup powders and stuff, it can embed into there a lot like our antiquing dust. So just uh, something to consider, but it has been done. Um, those apron sinks, I guess, the people on the renovate. Mm -hmm. yeah. Stephanie says, hi from Mississippi. Susan says, hello from North Dakota. Everybody hello, else, tell us where Dakota, you're watching from. Yeah, what, where, where did we catch everybody today? And what's the weather like? We have not been lucky here on the West Coast. Just, well, lucky. It's raining. Typical. It's not warm, but... I disagree with Mary. I love the cooler weather, She's so I'm all about... Person. Yeah, I'm all about this July rain. <laughs> I want a tan, so... <laughs> so we're just kind of... I'm making sure that this layer is a little bigger than canopy, just because it's going to spread quite well once we're going for the full effect here. And I'm pushing it into the grooves. You can do this if you like, but again. It just yeah. means you might have to do two coats. Yeah, you might have to do two coats, so. <laughs> Linda says she's watching from Charleston, West Virginia, and it's hot. Ah, nice, <laughs> wonderful. And Donna says, hi from Pennsylvania, storms and humid here. As it dries, I'll see some spots that I want to fill in, but as long as I'm careful and not getting the other surfaces um, covered in white paint, it should be all good. Uh, if you find that it's starting to tack up, that you do need, it means it's dried for a little bit and you come back around and now you're applying wet paint to semi-wet paint. So you just need to let that dry a bit. So I'm not going to touch that area anymore. Just give that a couple, a few minutes. I'm trying to make sure it's all even. Ooh, Pascal said, yeah, hi Pascal. from Alaska, smoky here. That's not fun. Oh, boy, yeah. That's one of the worst parts of the summer here. <laughs> Um, just a reminder for everybody who's tuning in now, we are doing a little giveaway today. So anybody who is watching live and leaves a comment, um, by the end of the video, we're going to draw one winner who's going to get two painting sponges and four sample jars of paint. You can pick any colors you like. Um, all you have to do to win is leave a comment and let us know um, what maybe craft or furniture piece you would like to try the sponging ombre technique on and what colors you want to use. Oh, um, I just wanted to show a few examples from the last video of ombre. If you guys were curious what colors would kind of look good with ombre, just a quick example. And these were done with a with a paint brush yeah. instead of a sponge. So but it's a little different of an effect, but just if you guys haven't tried blending colors together, what would work? Typically a dark to light gradient is what ombre is, but so many cool color combinations that you can do so definitely something worth trying i hope maybe that helped pick the colors mm -hmm. just a little demo we do have these candlesticks on our website if anyone's wondering um they're unpainted uh mango wood from india really nice uh, okay so we've got canopy here vanilla frosting on the top and i'm just going to go in with the other end of my brush here or sponge with soiree which is just a nice it's kind of like a slightly warmer tone to Sunday tea. Sunday tea is definitely a gray beige compared to soiree, but definitely nice. And then, yeah, making sure I have the right idea. <laughs> Just going to stipple it. Joyce says, hello from Ontario. I have a small table. I would love to do the blue ombre effect on. Yes. Good. Oh. Yeah, and it's okay if you get harsh lines at first. We are going to be doing... 
you're going to be overlapping quite a bit to get the right effect. And I do have canopy on the other end of that sponge, so I'm just making sure when I go down, I'm just using one end of the sponge because I don't want to make a mess. Oh, Donna says, I would use the colors you're using. Nice, yeah. <laughs> oh, I had to try the neutral one. And then I guess if you wanted to put like a um, herbs or something written nicely with a, yeah, be cute. an artist brush, that'd be really nice. Uh, Victoria says she has a dresser she'd love to read you in an ombre color using teal colors. Mm, yes. The blues and teals are always really nice in an ombre, just like this one that Mary did earlier. I'm sure it doesn't matter, but I also just, I find it really easy to blend blues. Yeah. It can't yeah. make a difference, but <laughs> I, I find it does. Susan says she likes blue and gray. Nice, yeah. We've got plenty of both of those. I love them. I am loving, it's it's rather easy to do this with a sponge over a brush, um, especially on a terracotta pot, just because it's drying so quickly. Each layer I'm putting on, canopy, the edges I could already kind of start to just put soiree on top of and it wouldn't tack up or bring any more paint up. It's just come along pretty quickly for me. And if you yeah. wanted, you could distress at the end just with a wet cloth or some sandpaper just for a rustic effect, but I think this is doing good. I think for anybody who might be like me, who's a little bit intimidated by the ombre technique, I think sponging seems a little bit less in <laughs> intimidating yeah. anyway than, than using a brush. It seems a little bit easier to blend, so. I'm definitely finding that, yeah. <laughs> so I'm just going to overlap them a bit. Jess says she has metal buckets uh, to paint for her patio. She wants to use full bloom because it matches her patio pillows perfectly. Ooh, nice. Alright, gonna go back in with the vanilla frosting and just touch up what I had to wait to dry. Just thin coats is all you really need. It's a definitely a watch it happen kind of thing. And you'll find with the sponges it makes like a half moon arc. So I've been kind of just dabbing down when I have too much paint on my sponge. I like to just until I can see what it will look like, it's kind of giving me a preview, so I know that I'm not gonna mess up if I'm like almost done. There's a, there's ways that you can just, oh, and I've put paint in the wrong spot, another five minutes of blending and I'll be done. <laughs> so, just helps if you wanna tap it out onto a piece of cardboard first before you go ahead and apply it to your pot. Yeah, dryer's probably safer than wetter for this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's always best to go on less paint and thinner coats with a, an ombre project. Uh, Robin says she has a dresser she wants to do an ombre. Um, some of the blues like Bliss Ice Cold Vanilla Frosting. Yes. Um, or maybe she'd play around with some of the new pastels. Mm -hmm. Bella the Ball is a really nice powder blue gray. That might be something. Mm -hmm. That with String of Pearls. Ooh, yes. <laughs> Don't forget to comment, guys. Uh, what are all you wanting to paint? What would you ombre? What colors? What project? We've got end tables were suggested. I think like the, the legs or the pedestal of a table would be really cool if it was ombre and maybe hemp oil the top or something. Yeah. That's just my idea. What would you comment? And, uh, and I'll show you our, our giveaway prize. Yes. One lucky winner at the end of this video is going to get these two sponges and they're going to get uh, four of our four ounce jars of paint and you get to pick any colors you like. So you can try this technique out for yourself. And uh, here's a prime example of not paying attention to oh what no! I was doing. There we go. That's not ombre, is it? <laughs> really? But everything is fixable. Yeah. I'm just going to wait three seconds and come back to that and cover it up. <laughs> that always happens. Joe says, I agree. The sponges look way easier. I, I assume find. she means easier than paint brushes. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't take as much water, so artistry. To it up. Uh, yes. Put too much paint on there and I started to bring it up. So that's kind of what that looks like. I'm just going to wait for that to really dry. So I think I'm going to go on to Soiree and try and blend it in with Canopy. It's warm in here. Canopy, where are you? Brandy says, oh my yes, what a great suggestion, the ombre table legs. Yeah. yeah. Hope that works for somebody. Mm -hmm. I'm try that. Got an old oak table that could use a facelift. And I just love this brown, it's so easy. All right, gonna take the edge and bring this color down into Soiree. Colleen says, um, 
she, she says it would look awesome on some DIY projects they're working on for her oldest daughter's wedding. Ooh. They need some centerpieces, and ombre would really make it pop. Yeah, mm. totally. Um, Janet asked, would dark purple and black be too dark to ombre? I don't see why not. I'd say it would be very close. I mean, Cheers is definitely dark, but licorice or black would be a lot darker, so I feel like you could. We've got the swatch right here. Um, if you want to point to licorice, that's Yeah, licorice. so we've got licorice here and cheers here, which is a really dark, mm -hmm. ruddy purple. I think if you wanted, you could um, maybe add a touch of white to a mix of cheers just to top it off for maybe like a lighter gradient, but I absolutely... It might be a little more subtle than, yeah. say, this one here. <laughs> yeah, it won't be like a stark but, contrast, but, it'll but it really could good. be really nice and really dramatic, I think. Please try it. Please yeah. Try it. And if those are your favorite colors, then do it. Or that's what your decor wants. <laughs> um, Susan says, does this paint stand up to a lot of weather? It does. Uh, it's pretty good. It doesn't fade in the sun very much. Um, it does help to seal outdoor furniture with tough coat. That's our satin top coat. Um, dries to a bit of a shine and it's it will withstand the weather. It's, it's best to use for outdoor projects. A couple of our retailers have painted their signs even sealed it with tough coat they still look good a year or so later and we always recommend tough coat even if you're using these indoors for plant pots especially in the yeah. inside of the pot yeah. i don't know if you I can did see seal the inside it's see how it's shiny yeah it's just it's not um as rough as the outside was before i started painting so that's been sealed with tough coat to prevent contaminants leaching through with all the water and the dirt um if this pot was going outside for sure i would seal the outside as well just you know the rain and everything we had one terracotta pot in our um, office here once that had metallic cream on the outside mm -hmm. and we did not seal the inside and the water, <laughs> as soon as we watered it, it started leaching through and making bubbles in the metallic cream. So we learned that um, sealing inside and out is probably the safest <laughs> option. All right, gonna go in with Soiree and blend it. As I'm doing all of this, vanilla frosting is drying for me nicely. Stephanie says, what about yellow? Yellow, definitely. <laughs> I'm all about the yellows myself, so I'm a big fan. Um, we do have this. I'm just going to, real quick, in yeah, case you step in and see. Yeah. There's a little <laughs> blend of yellow. That's fresh mustard, full bloom, and available. Beautiful. Yeah. And then in terms of yellows, we've got so we've got fresh mustard here, the one that Mary just showed you. We've got bees. Really bright, lemony yellow. Yeah. It's getting pink in my hair. <laughs> love how that's blending so just a little bit of paint every time Oop. oh susan asked um what is the product you use to top coat uh that's tough coat um so that one is for outside and then we've also got clear coat uh, which is good for any kind of piece that's going indoors uh, nightstands dressers it's all it dries to the same satin sheen as a tough coat and just adds a little bit of uh water resistance and durability side so it's a little bit of a work in progress just when you think you've got something right you've accidentally tapped the other side but <laughs> I think if I was working with three different sponges that'd be easier for me but I like to do things differently. Jerry says you just gave me a great idea the ombre, ombre effect on my wooden bench on the front porch. Oh yeah it's a subtle look and you don't have to go with the crazy colors unless you want to um, but it's just it adds a something that you don't always see so you can even do three really similar colors so it's mm -hmm. really subtle like um, that makes your blending easier too if you're you know pop you the know. bubbly soiree canapé so it's all just uh different shades of brown so many options mm -hmm. all right we gotta get i think i'm just gonna do nope. mackenzie asked uh tough coat is by country chic paint or a different brand that's us um everything mm -hmm. that i'm referencing is is ours <laughs> Yeah, so you can find it in our online shop or you can stop by a local retailer. Make sure you check the store locator on our website and see if, yeah. if there's a store near you. Um, Sasha says she wants to ombre a high boy chest um, in light to medium blue. Ooh, very nice. Um, I think I'm just going to actually spritz this now because we're at that point where I kind of want all the layers wet at the same time. I'm just going to work in sections though. Oh, oh, maybe a bit too much water. We'll see. And you do have to, when you wet it, just be aware that it might 
like create little droplets so if you are pouncing like crazy you might see some some splatter so just a uh, go slow and gentle this is my soiree end I'm gonna work it in and water is our friend always with ombre just makes it so much easier um donna says what top coat is best for furniture indoors clear coat um if you're looking for some good resistance and a little bit of a shine um it yeah it's easy scratch resistant um, if you want just a nice 100% natural finish and a softer touch than the matte paint, um, our natural wax works really well for that. Or hemp oil. Yep, <laughs> hemp oil. I always forget, but yes. Um, Sue, oh, no, sorry, Amber. I'm sorry, guys. I'm mixing up the comments here. <laughs> um, Susan asks, can you use it on metal? Uh, yes, yes, you can. Um, you can use the paint on metal. Uh, you might need some primer if it's a really slick, non-porous metal, as most of them are. Um, sometimes a good scuff sand works, but maybe primer, and then you put on your paint, or metallic creams work really well on metal, I find. Um, if you have old, outdated hardware and you just want to give it a bit of life, or we've got uh, five metallic shades. We've got mm -hmm. copper, pewter, silver, gold, one more bronze. bronze. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and those work really well on metal, too. And then, of course, for durability and long last, you want to seal that with Tuffco, probably. A lot of uses for everything. Heather says she so needs to do the terracotta pots in blue and purple. <laughs> All right, so I think I'm happy with how that's looking for me, and I'm just going to blend in soiree and vanilla frosting next. So I'm going to spray the side that I haven't done. And I'm just, I really want a light mist. I don't want to create drops. It's kind of like that face mister that people use <laughs> after, I don't know. Yeah, so just... Um, Arisha says, I have been on the fence buying the sponge. Do it. <laughs> Please, there's so you, many uses. You will not regret it. I use these sponges all the time. Oh, um, and did I mention you, you should use a sponge for top coats? Yeah, so these, yeah. These double for paint and our top coats, like clear coat and tough coat. You can use them for paint. You can use them for top coats. We've used them for hemp oil sometimes. You can do just about anything. Tricky chair spindles takes five minutes. So it's, it's definitely something worth a buy. Um, Heather asked, what's the spray? Oh, this is just water. So it's just a fine spray. That's all. Um, I like to use these um, to fill them just with uh, rubbing alcohol, and that makes uh, cells in acrylic pores. So that's kind of a cool thing to try as well. Or, I guess, clay-based paint pores, too, <laughs> using this paint. So, yeah. And I do like to just make sure I've gone in on the inside because there will be a layer of dirt, but you will still see inside of the pot a bit and I want it to look nice might give this to someone so just don't forget to seal the inside with tough coat or clear coat tough coat it's best but if you've only got clear coat on hand that's fine yeah I would say if you're using clear coat instead totally fine just do like two or three coats yeah and don't forget um, for anybody who's just tuning in now we are doing a giveaway. Leave a comment to enter. Just tell us what you want to ombre paint and what colors you would use. One winner at the end of this live video is going to get two painting sponges, like the one that Mary's using today. And they're going to get four of our four ounce size jars of paint, and you can pick any colors you like. Um, Michelle asked, oh, sorry, where was our question? I got to scroll up here a little bit. Um, Heather said, would you use the sponge to do a marble effect? Um, like the acrylic, like the, the paint pouring kind of marble effect? I think Could she's meaning more the kind where you like sponge it on and kind of like add oh, little lines, more yeah, like a hand painted like marble. For the base colors and trying to get that really soft gradient, yes, probably the sponge, but for maybe the finer details, you might need an artist brush or something, but you could definitely try. That would be something to start with. And I'm just going to spray. And you can actually spray the sponge if you find that works too. Um, I've tried both and it's pretty much just the same thing, but it just depends on what works for you and what you found did the trick. Susan asked, can you use a polyurethane for a top coat? Uh, is that the oil-based one? As long as, uh, yeah, you should be able to. We do have the top coat, which is formulated for our paint, so that might be a good option too. Yeah. 
<laughs> um, Arisha response. says, I want to ombre everything now. Love the pots. They would make great teacher gifts. Yeah, yeah totally. So just softening out my lines. A lot of people are giving us some love for this purple one over here. <laughs> oh, me too. I actually am thinking about really careful. Look at how white. That's another thing. Wear <laughs> gloves or don't love your nails. This project. <laughs> um, I think I'm going to add maybe a little bit of Lucky Penny, which is our copper metallic green. Just for like a cool, trendy look. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, I try to work copper into everything. I swear, I'm like Lucky Penny's number one fan. Um, Heather asks, would it be better to do the inside first and then your outside? Um, I did seal the, the pot before I started, but as you can see, maybe I should have waited for everything to dry before I started painting the inside. Um, I'm just catching the top rim here because that's where the dirt um, will land. But I would maybe wait to do the inside, just as long as you remember to do it. That's probably it. Aw, and Donna says, you were so talented. <laughs> Thank you, Donna. It's just practice. And Jerry so. says, it looks like a little paint goes a long way. It sure does, especially with the sponge. Yeah, so I think I'm actually quite happy with that. I think maybe when I'm done, I'm going to just distress and then maybe add something nice to it. So where is my little tray? You could add a little stencil on top yeah. or yeah. pretty much anything. I'm just going to set that carefully down because it's still wet. But here's just a little example. Mind all <laughs> Robin says, yes, add that lucky penny. <laughs> yes, good. I have a lucky penny fan as well. Good. <laughs> there we go. There's our two ombre side by side. I'm really loving this neutral look. Me That's too. awesome. I think it would definitely look really good distressed. Um, yes, I think I like it a lot. So that was done with three colors. The other two were done with two colors. I used Soiree, Canapé, and our um, creamy white vanilla frosting. And that was done with our sponges. So I think I'm just gonna give people a couple more seconds to comment for the prize. So that was the two sponges, four samples of paint, and our color cards. And all the question was, was what are you gonna paint? Uh, ombre style, and what colors would you use? So last chance. And then I think we're ready to give our prizes away. Awesome. Oh, we just got a ton of hearts. Thanks, you guys. Send some hearts and some likes if you're Thanks. loving these ombre pots. I think we're about to draw our giveaway winner here. Okay, drum roll. Our giveaway winner is Brenda Pang. Good job, Brenda. You're Congrats. You're of our lustrum card, our main color card, our uh, four samples of paint, your choice, of course, and our fabulous painting sponges. I hope you enjoy. I hope they last you a long time. <laughs> <laughs> Mine have. Um, so thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll be doing a few more later, so stay tuned for those. Um, and I hope you guys just have a great week, a great weekend, and uh, happy painting. Bye now.